So we were talking about poetic license and poetic license is a one evidence of how poetry uh, involves a very specialized use of language, which is not uh, common uh, for other disciplines, right? And therefore it is the connotative impact of words rather than the denotative impact that acquires significance in poetry, right? So words are not taken for what they literally are, but what they imply or what they suggest or the feelings uh, they trigger in the reader's mind. And he also feels that uh, words are mutable and meaning shifts when words are placed in relation to one another. So he believes that words have a life, a dynamism of their own, and uh, you cannot fix meaning in words. Words do not have a definitive meaning. And therefore, uh, the whole uh, context or the whole uh, meaning gets clear. It, it becomes clearer only when you look at words in relation to each other. Right. And uh, uh, again, uh, what uh, Cleanth Brooks is uh, adding over here is that he says uh, poetry is ambivalent and ambiguous and open ended because unlike a scientific uh, document, it doesn't have footnotes. It doesn't have explanations. So the poet, the poet's tools are not uh, additional notes or explanations. The poet can only resort to literary devices uh, like metaphors and similes to convey what uh, they have in their mind and uh, why is uh, what is the concept of paradox basically so we are going to look at a, an analysis of a poem which brooks has done uh, where he has uh, identified the central paradox of this poem by wordsworth and he has uh, interpreted the poem in the light of that paradox but essentially we need to first understand what is a paradox paradox is when two seemingly contrary meanings surface in any given context. So where two meanings are, um, look, they seem to be completely opposite each, uh, to each other, or uh, they seem to be completely divergent, two completely divergent perspectives, or co two completely uh, opposite uh, or binary uh, ideas when uh, they emerge that is a paradox and they have to emerge through the same context that is when you have a paradox right so here we have a poem by william wordsworth which is uh, which is entitled composed upon westminster bridge now we all know that wordsworth was a romantic poet and he was he, his primary topic was nature and his literary theory and his critical theory also uh, tells us that uh, poetry, the subject of poetry has to be things that are around us uh, because the, he believes that there is so much of beauty uh, in nature around us that there is enough to get pleasure out of and there is enough to trigger our creative, um, uh, creative impulses uh, which can lead to creative texts. So now this is a very interesting poem which was composed uh, by the po poet. Uh, uh, the poem describes London, the scene of London from Westminster Bridge. So in, in the poem, the narrator is standing on the bridge and he's looking at the entire city of London before sunrise. Uh, just in the we hours, uh, the hours just before the sun rises, and he's mesmerized by the beauty that London, the sleeping city, has to offer. Now, uh, if you look at the poem, it, it it glorifies nature, right? There is an implicit undercurrent um, where, where uh, which tries to suggest that it is nature in all its majesty and in all its bounty and its beauty and its abundance and its glory which the poet is describing and which is coming across but at the same time uh, it is paradoxical because uh, neither is london natural nor is westminster bridge natural